What's up, video editors? My name is Jiggy, and I am a professional video editor. I've worked with YouTube creators who have millions of subscribers. One of the most important things I had to do as a video editor for these people was to be fast. And one of the fast ways that you can speed up your workflow is by having really good keyboard shortcuts. Today, I'm going to be showing you the keyboard shortcuts that I have used over the last six years. I've been upgrading them throughout all these years to improve my workflow, and today I'm gonna to be sharing it to you. Instead of you having to spend six years to learn these shortcuts yourself, you can just watch this video and I'll save you six years worth of time. I'll also put a link in the description so you can download my keyboard shortcuts and I'll tell you how to import them into Premiere Pro for you to use. So how do you go about creating your own keyboard shortcuts? One of the things that you should avoid as a video editor is using keyboard shortcuts that require two keys. For example, Control W, Control Q. Even though it may not seem like a big deal, it'll really add up once you start editing a lot more. Another rule that you're gonna wanna use when creating your keyboard shortcuts, you wanna keep your most used keyboard shortcuts on the left-hand side of the keyboard and your lesser used ones on the right-hand side. If you find yourself going back and forth with your keyboard shortcuts, you messed up and you probably need to change your keyboard shortcuts ASAP. A third thing is to be ready to just not be as good as you were before you change your keyboard shortcuts. It's muscle memory. So if you immediately change your muscle memory and you're not seeing results, give it some time. Just allow yourself to get used to your new keyboard shortcuts and don't change too many keyboard shortcuts at one time. All right, so those are my steps to creating really good keyboard shortcuts. Let's go over my keyboard shortcuts that I've created. So let's head over to edit and then keyboard shortcuts. To show you an example of how your keyboard shortcuts can change with different industries, when I would create React content, I would use the multi-cam a lot. So in order to change the view in the multi-cam, I mapped each of these numbers to a different scene inside of the multi-cam. You might not need multi-cam footage, so these might be more useful to you as different edit keys to match your specific needs. But let's get started with some of the essential keyboard shortcuts I think every editor should have. I have an add edit key on the Q button. Add edit just simply means you add a cut instead of having to switch to the razor tool. I have play and stop as W. Now, this will trip a lot of people up because a lot of people actually have their play set to space. I just didn't like the fact that my, uh, my thumb was always kind of leaning over into the space category. Reaching over to press the space bar was actually hurting my hands instead of helping him. So W is play and stop. E is ripple trim. E is my ripple trim or previous edit to playhead. So what E does basically is that you can create a cut here and bring it to the previous cut. So it'll cut over here and move it over just like that. Just all in one button. Really useful keyboard shortcut. R is one of my favorite shortcuts because I don't see a lot of editors using this. It's add edit to all tracks. Usually editors will just simply add edit, but add edit to all tracks, especially when I was creating React content with a whole bunch of layers. It really helped not having to press add edit on four different layers or having to select four different layers. I just press R and it cuts it at the playhead. T is Iris. Iris is simply a label. It just changes the label of a video. It's pretty much useless. I would like to not use the T button because it requires too much effort on my index finger. As you can see, I'm kind of stretching. R is around the farthest that I'll go for my keyboard shortcuts. So pretty much I haven't really put much thought into the rest of this entire row. The only thing that I really do use a lot is the P button. The P button for me clears the in and out points from Premiere so I don't have to right click and say clear in and out. Very simple. Before we get to the next line, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You guys don't know what Skillshare is. Skillshare is a learning platform with thousands of professionals teaching courses about anything that you may want to learn. Topics such as business, entrepreneurship, productivity, and even video editing. You know, now that summer is here, we're experiencing school breaks and slower work schedules, which is the perfect time to start learning. This guy, Jordi Vanderput, is not only an extremely seasoned professional video editor, but he's also a teacher on this platform. He teaches video editors to take their editing passion and turn it into an editing career. His multi-camera editing lesson in his advanced video editing course is really, really useful right now. I'm always creating multi-cam sequences and can always afford to learn a little bit more about how the whole sequence works. This summer, you could also come with me on my learning journey. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will get one month free of Skillshare. I'm always pro learning. This is an educational YouTube video channel after all, and I think Skillshare is very well worth it. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, back to the video. So next row is A, track select. Track select selects 
everything in front of the element that you selected. So it'll select the entire timeline. It's really useful for me in, in case I need to close small gaps or just move things over. S is delete. If you're pressing backspace, delete, this is what I'm talking about. Then you have to go all the way over here to delete or backspace to delete your clip or image or music. And that's just way too far to have to do this constantly. I much prefer my delete to be one of my essentials. S is the key for me. D is apply audio transition. You would select two clips and it would immediately create an audio transition in between those two clips. To extend that tip a slight further, you can head over to preferences and go to timeline and you can change the default time for the audio transition. I've changed it to three frames. So next one is match frame. This is the default keyboard shortcut that Adobe Premiere offers to you. Match frame just matches the clip that you selected with the original clip in the source monitor. Really simple stuff, really useful. And G is audio gain, just so I can change the levels of an audio clip or a video clip. Same thing as last time, I really touch the rest of these because these are too far away. Having to press G is already enough. H is ridiculous. I'm not clicking that. So let's move on to the next line. This one has been a game changer. Every editor knows the curse of having to do control Z every time. I simply remove control and just let Z be my undo. I wouldn't recommend changing your undo button from Z at all because every other application or web application in the world uses control Z as the global undo button. I've tried to do it where I change my undo button from Z to like X or C or something. It just hasn't worked just because the muscle memory will exist in other applications and it'll just throw you off completely. X was my enable or disable. This allows me to enable or disable clips really fast. For me, X was, I want to delete this clip, but just in case I'll need it again, I'll just keep it there. That was my disable. C is my razor tool. I believe this is the Adobe Premiere default. B is my selection tool. And B was add frame hold. Add frame hold is basically just holding a frame for the rest of the video duration. So if you have a video or some piece of footage that you just want to freeze frame, you press B once, it'll make a cut. And that cut will be a frozen frame. That's pretty much all my keyboard shortcuts. I hope you found a new shortcut that you can add onto your workflow. If you're still interested in downloading my keyboard shortcuts for you to use, I will leave a link in the description. Now I'm gonna teach you how you can import my keyboard shortcuts for you to use. So adding keyboard shortcuts inside of Premiere Pro is a little strange. You're gonna head over to your file explorer and you're gonna to go to documents and then you're going to go to Adobe. After that, you're gonna head over to Premiere Pro and you're gonna click the version that you're using. In my case, 2024, and then you're going to go to your profile. After that, you're gonna head over to Win. And then you can drag and drop the downloaded keyboard shortcut that I gave you into this folder. Restart your Premiere Pro, go to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, and then it'll be a selectable option in the preset menu. And you press OK, and you'll have my keyboard shortcuts. If you're a video editor interested in speeding up your workflow even more, I have a bunch of useful tools at my shop, jiggypuff.gumroad.com and I will link that in the description as well for you to check out. I have a bunch of free stuff as well as some really useful paid presets, tools, extensions for you as an editor to improve your workflow.